Hi guys, I'm going to show you how to deal with time series data in Excel. So we're going to jump right into an example. This is the quarterly sales data for car sales. Okay, so and it's quarterly because the sales, which is what we're measuring here, is recorded once every quarter. So we also have this column here, which is the year. So in year one, quarter one, sales were 4.8, and that's measured in thousands, so that means 4,800 units. In year one, quarter two, sales were 4.1, or 4,100. And finally, so we understand this data clearly, in year four, quarter three, for example, sales were 8,000 units recorded as 8.0 okay so this right here comprises the historical time series data okay and what we're measuring here specifically is sales and the goal of all this is that we want to be able to understand how sales moves through time and then be able to project that or extrapolate that into the future into perhaps year five okay so by the end of this video we should be able to make predictions for these blank cells over here quarters one two three and four okay so let's approach this in a step-by-step -step fashion so there's going to be a lot of columns we're going to have to create plots and little steps along the way but the great thing is you can always pause the video and uh, go back and see what I did okay so step one is to just visualize the data so for this step we're just gonna create a line chart with markers okay so let's do that we go to insert line and we'll choose line with markers okay and Excel sometimes just goes ahead and suggests some things but we can clear that out by going to design select data remove everything so we start with a blank slate now we're gonna add the name of the series is sales okay that's the data that we want to understand and be able to eventually predict okay and here's the actual historical data hit OK and already you could see that there's this really cool kind of up and down cycling going on here okay we're gonna talk about that in a second but before we finish this plot let's replace this horizontal axis with the actual years and quarters so we can always go to exact uh, time point that we're interested in for example if we want to look at year three quarter two we right now we wouldn't we would have to do a little bit too much thinking to find that okay so let's fix that axis we go edit and we can highlight both these so if you have two columns like this that are connected that tell you the time you can highlight both of them okay hit OK OK and we're done maybe we give this a title time series plot of car sales okay that's a decent uh, name for this okay let's make that a little smaller Okay, and the legend's gonna be useful because as you're gonna see, we're gonna keep adding uh, plots on top of this one, okay? Series on top of this one, All right? So let's move this to the side. So that's step one. Now we take a look at this, that we, what we've created here. And let me make it a little bigger actually so that we can start understanding what we're looking at. We can clearly see that there's this pattern that kind of repeats itself more or less every year right so within year one which is between these two lines I'm drawing there's this kind of dip and then 
climax. Then in year two, there starts a dip and then a climax. Again, a dip, year three, climax, dip, climax. There seems to be a cycle or what we call seasonality because it, uh, this cycle occurs within one year, right? This down then up cycle repeats itself once a year. We call this seasonality, okay? So that's one component that we can vis visualize from this plot. The other thing we can visualize is that this, if you take a more zoomed out kind of perspective, a fuzzy perspective, take off your glasses if you will, you'll notice besides this up and down movement that we just talked about, the overall direction of this plot is somewhat increasing, right? Can be summarized maybe with this very simple straight line, okay? So that's the, what we call the trend component, okay? So, so far we talked about the seasonal component, which you can see, the trend component, which you can also see with a slightly different perspective. And then the final component in the model that we're using here is going to be the irregular component, which means the day-to-day -day or quarter-to-quarter -quarter variation that exists that's kind of beyond explanation uh, and doesn't follow any pattern. The irregular aspect, they call it. Sometimes they call it the random aspect. Okay, And that's always present in data, no matter whether it's time series data or not. Okay, So we have to account for variability because nothing follows uh, in the real world nothing follows an exact kind of perfect up and down uh, predictable pattern uh, even though there is a discernible pattern there's going to be uh, slight variations from time period to time period okay so those are three components that we're going to have to deal with in the time series uh, uh, analysis okay so now let's put this chart aside for now and go to our second step. Uh, okay, so our next step in, uh, in this analysis is to create a column uh, which is just a kind of a time code column. Okay, so let's insert that in front of the t uh, time series data. And we'll just call this T. Okay, and let's just center this. And all it's going to be is a time code. So the first period that we have data on, which is year one, quarter one, we'll call one. And then we'll just increment this up, holding down the control button, all the way to the last period that we have data for. So we have, in total, 16 periods. OK? We're going to come back to this variable quite a bit. It's important to create it early on. All right. The next step is to smooth out. This is where we actually are getting into the uh, uh, analysis and uh, uh, manipulation of the time series data. So as you all agreed, there is this pattern going on. This pattern that I draw, drew in red is the seasonality component of the time series data. And it also includes the irregularity okay so in this step we want to uh, smooth okay and then we put this word smooth those are O's in quotes because what we're attempting to do in this step which is going to be in this column is to kind of put an ironing ironing on this data if you will to kind of flatten out all the up and down and try to smooth out the line Okay, to do this, one technique, and the technique we're going to use here, is to take a moving average. Okay, so and because our cycle lasts four periods, because I, as we discussed, it dips and then climaxes, dips then climaxes, dips and then climaxes once every year. So one cycle is four periods, four quarters. Right? So we can take 
a moving average of four periods. Okay, and the way we do that is you can go down to about the third row and you're just going to use the average function here and you're going to average starting with the top two with the top values you're going to go down and average the first four numbers okay from your time series okay then you can drag this down and you can drag it down all the way and you'll see that we're going to have to delete some of these values at the end basically we want to make sure that each one of these calculations includes four numbers okay so obviously the first one is good the next one drops you see it dropped to the next four numbers and this pattern continues all the way down and if we go to the last one we'll see that the last one doesn't catch four numbers because of this blank cell so we don't want this okay so let's just delete this one the one right above it does catch four numbers so it's perfect okay so this is the moving average of four periods all right now the next step is connected to this step we can because we're taking a moving average of an even number of periods we have this kind of problem where this 5.4 actually represents the center between these four numbers right right because it averaged these four numbers and so it should actually be written over here 5.4 which is between the two rows right and then this pattern continues on and on for the next four right so this 5.6 should actually be written in between these two rows because it represents 5.6 represents the center of the next four numbers okay so these this these uh, numbers that we have here are not centered because they fall in between the numbers that they're averaging and that's always going to happen when you average an even number of numbers okay in a time series data so what we have to do is this next step which is centering it and it's called centered moving average okay so if you had done uh, an odd number here you wouldn't have to do this extra step that we're gonna we're about to do because you would already have a centered moving average okay CMA centered moving average so the idea here is that if we average this number and this number then we're going to end up back into the center back into a row that we can associate with a value okay so let me erase these lines and draw it one more time for the first one what we did in MA4 is we, we averaged four, these four numbers so the average of these four numbers represents the center of these four. So it should be placed in the middle of this row. In other words, it doesn't fall into this cell or into this cell. And so we had to kind of put it somewhere because Excel doesn't let us go in between cells. So, but really it's over here. And then the 5.6 is the average of the next four numbers these four and it falls in between these two rows okay I'm doing this just for the first two so that you can understand the concept of centering so the idea is these two fall into no man's land I can't connect 5.4 to to two or to three because it falls in between two and three right and 5.6 falls in between 3 and 4. So I have to get these back into a row so I can connect them back to these numbers. So the way you do that is you average these two and the center of two off centers falls back into the center. And we'll be back into a proper row and this number will be associated with the no row th uh, 
year one, quarter three, or time code three. Okay, so that's the idea behind centering. So the way to do that equals average again. And this time you're just gonna average the two numbers. Okay, and then you could drag this down. Okay. And you'll be able to drag it down all the way and then just test whether two numbers were averaged. This one obviously has a blank in it, so we don't want this. Okay. So the one right above, perfect. So in effect, we've sent we've created a centered moving average in this step. Okay, and now these numbers are useful for us because they're connected properly to our row. Okay? So now I can plot this stuff, the centered moving average, right on top of this plot. Okay? So this step, remember, was the point of these two columns was to smooth the time series data to get rid of the seasonality and ir irregularity components okay so let's plot this so in order to plot this let's pull the plot back up let's click design select data add and the name is going to be centered moving average the values are going to be these values right but be careful if you just highlight these numbers excel is going to start 5.5 here okay at year one quarter one when we know that 5.5 we did all that work is connected to year one quarter three in other words we don't have any centered moving average numbers for year one quarter one and year one quarter two Okay, so you should highlight the blanks. Likewise, you should highlight the last two blanks because we want Excel to plot it uh, in the right place. So we don't have values for year four, quarter three, and year four, quarter four. So why don't we tell Excel that? Okay, hit OK, hit OK, and as you can see, it plots the smoothed out centered moving average of four periods right on top of the original time series data which is in blue okay so at this point I'm gonna stop this video and I'm gonna call this video a and I'm gonna create video B so that uh, you can we can continue with this analysis we're about 33 percent a third way to, to forecasting. So be sure to watch video B. Okay? See you next time.